I would just like to give you a chance to kind of introduce yourself, um, where you grew up, where you went to high school, and uh, how you came to USF. All right, yeah, um, my name is Keanu Jacobs Guichard. I was born and raised in a small little island called St. Martin, um, 37 square miles small. And then at 14, I moved to Fort Lauderdale to try to get better exposure for baseball. Um, attended St. Thomas Aquinas. Um, I won a state championship my sophomore year. And then started playing summer ball. And once I got playing summer ball, I got recruited by free schools. But once I took a visit to USF, I knew I wanted to come to USF. You're saying once you took the visit, that's when yeah. you kind of sold on it? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice, man. What What about it sold you on it so fast? Um, it, I just felt at home, you know, like see how a lot of palm trees and like just the environment on campus. I felt like like I was back home. So I just wanted to feel comfortable. And the coaches, they did a, they did a really good job, you know, showing me the school and the program and like what they're about. And like I bought in from day one. So that's awesome. man. So would you say that they had maybe like a vision they communicated to you or something like that? Yeah. Um, the vision they, they showed me about how they can develop me as a player and the guys they had coming in and just the competitive level. And it's a really good conference too. So, you know, I just wanted to play baseball at a really good level where I can play. And they told me that they picture, like they can see me playing at for USF. So that's what really sold me. So you, you mentioned that you grew up in St. Martin. Um, so are you from the, Dutch side or French side? Yeah, I'm from the Dutch side. I'm Dutch. Okay, nice. Yeah, so funny thing, uh, Ik Prata, Beetje Nederlands. Uh, oh, you got to meet you, man. <laughs> for real, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have some family from Netherlands, so. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the things I thought was cool when I saw your background. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I had to Google this, but from what I saw, I mean, obviously a lot of people are aware that a lot of MLB players – Come from like Carousel, you know, we got Andrew Jones, Albies, uh, yep. Jansen, so on, so on. But I didn't see that any MLB player has ever been born in St. Martin. So, no, nah, nobody's ever made it to the MLB. So, okay. since I was since I was three years old, that's actually why we're number three. But since I was three years old, I told my dad, I like, I'm going to the league. And like, since then, like, it's been a goal every single day of my life that to be the first to make it. So, yeah, sure. Um, yep. But that connection is really there. Like, um, like the fact that, you know, the proximity to Carousel, like, is there still like support from them? Like, I know on Carousel, they do clinics for like the kids in there. Like, did you ever get to meet any of the guys? Like, yeah, I, I remember um, like growing up in a Caribbean, I would always like try to get as much exposure as possible because a lot of not, not much scouts come to St. Martin. So in the summer, I'd always go to Curacao for a few camps. And I met guys like Alvis. I met Simmons when he was, like, up and coming. Guys like Didi. Um, they're all humble guys. And then before I actually left St. Martin, I got I got an opportunity to train with Bogarts and his brother because my mom's from Aruba and Xander is the first from Aruba to make it. So I, like, kind of got that connection with Xander and – they're actually, it's, they help a lot. That's with like, little, yeah, with the little things too. You moved from there when you were 14. Yeah, um, freshman year of high school. Yeah. So with your age, like, that was actually probably kind of close to like the time of like Hurricane Irma and all that. Yeah, it was actually, uh, I'm trying to think. Hurricane Irma was sophomore year. Yeah. So a year after. Wow. So you got out like right before that. Dang. Yeah, I remember, I remember it hit us and like I didn't have contact with my dad for like a week. So like I was scared and my mom, like I had contact with her and she was like, get out of Florida. Like, I don't want you like going through the storm and like it didn't really hit Florida that hard. So like yeah. I got lucky, but it was crazy. Dang. So that that's that's crazy, man. So you moved by yourself then to Florida. Yeah. Yeah, my parents, they, they made the sacrifice and trusted my goal and believed in me. So I moved up. I lived with my aunt for four years. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, so I, I have I have some family in Florida, but got you. You come from St. Martin at age fourteen, freshman year of high school, to uh, South Florida. Um, yep. so I guess my question is, how how are you already good enough at baseball to just come like you know be on a varsity team at you know one of the better high schools in Florida, like? If you're living in St. Martin, you only have 44,000 people. It can't be that much competition. Like, how did you get good? Well, growing, like, even with the competition being, like, I was always I was always playing up when I was back home. So, like, at age nine, I was playing 12U. At 10 or, like, 11, I started playing 14U. So, like, I always played with higher competition. So, I feel like that's what, that's what made me better. Yeah. And – my cousins too like I was the youngest cousin so I always looked up to them we'd go to the field and train like six days a week and like as a as a young baseball player like I understood that repetition is what makes you better so like I'd always ask to go to the field every day with my dad and then once I made the move up here like I saw that I wasn't the best so like that's that's what pushed me even harder and then when I made varsity it was actually like I was just I was just happy to make the team because, like, knowing how, how how good the team was. And Troy Cameron, he was my coach, and he, like, he gave me crazy confidence one day. Like, I was struggling. I wouldn't say struggling because I was, like, lining, lining out, and he kept putting me in the lineup. And I was, like, I went up to him. I was, like, yo, I'm 0 for 9. Like, we have studs. Like, what's going on? He was, like, once you realize how good you are is when you're going to perform. And after that day, I just – he just gave me confidence of – do what I do what I do. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Y'all when did y'all win the state championship, you said? Sophomore year. 2018. Okay. And then you missed uh junior year with the injury? Yeah, I missed the whole 2019, everything, summer, everything. Got it. And then I got cleared December 2019. And then 2020 season started. I only played eleven games because of COVID and then Wow. Yeah. I don't know if they haven't played that much competitive baseball in the last No, nah, I haven't like the, the most baseball I played was travel ball. Wow. So, so like, my freshman year, I got 30-something ABs. Sophomore year, I got 30-something ABs. Junior year, no ABs. Senior year, 30-something ABs because of COVID. So, man. Okay. Well, yeah. How about uh, the summer leading into uh, USF? Did you do anything? Or actually, COVID kind of closed a lot of things. Yeah, that, that whole summer, I just grinded. I, just, I was just working out, trying to get – um. Like, coming into college, I know that my glove wasn't an issue because that's what got me recruited. Like, I was always a good infielder. So, like, I just worked on my hitting, to be honest, like, every day. Yeah, so that's – I like that you brought that up because I feel like, from my perspective, I feel like that might be the one of the things that could really help you reach your ceiling is if, you know, you become a really good hitter. Yep. I guess before USF, you know, maybe you had some hitting coaches, and then once you've gotten to USF – um who's been helping your development any specific mentors oh i've never really had a hidden coach like paid for so it would always be like the hidden coach on my team so like i would just hit and then like if he has to tweak anything he would tweak me out but i say like hitting wise most of my tips i would get from my head coach troy cameron um joey wardlow who's the head coach i uh STA or St. Thomas right now. Um, we had another hitting coach, Chris Delgado, who played, played some pro ball. He helped me out. And then once I got to USF, Bo and Kunko did an amazing job, like, every day trying to figure out, like, what can get me better as a hitter. And then once, like, in the fall, I went through, like, seven, eight stances trying to figure out, like, what works, like, what's comfortable. And then once I got that stance and felt comfortable – it was it was it after that, but Bo this year this year, Bo and Kunkel really helped me out a lot hitting wise. Yeah, I um, I actually remember like I, I looked at the film again from your stance. I actually like your stance and swing a lot. I think it's, I think it's in a good spot. Like you're not like too upright, but you're not crouched too much. You're kind yeah. of neutral. Um, mm -hmm. what what made you like arrive at that and decide that's where you want to be at? Um, mostly both because, like, I came in upright, leg kick, and, like, my hands were, like, normally the same. Like, my, my hands just sit on my side. But 
I was it was mostly my legs that he fixed. So like my legs were everywhere, like with my stances. Like I went from like a Stanton stance to like crouch to upright to just to see what's comfortable. And then like once I got in that, he told me like try to be athletic like when you're at shortstop. So how you sit at shortstop, try to feel like the same way in the box. So that's how I like, got that athletic stance in the box and like bought into a two strike approach. Like there's even some at bats. I, I went in a two strike approach with one strike, just trying to get barrel on the ball. Cause that's like the things they try to make us buy into here. So like, like no strikes or one strike. I normally go leg kick. I'm not really choked up. And then once I get to two strikes, I like close my stance a little more, no leg kick and choke up. So it, it really helped my hitting a lot. Nice. Yeah, it sounds like when you uh, get that leg kick, like a little more, you made it more efficient, like smaller, or is that, well, how, how did it change? So, like, normally I would go leg kick, like, my leg would come up a little bit, put it down, and then two-strike approach, I just, like, keep it on the ground and just, I just keep it on the ground, no no leg kick whatsoever. Gotcha. Just, just to, like, defend the plate, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, look good, man. Like the four games that you played, you got to hit every game, You're making good contact. Um, so, what did you learn, like from the like from the few weeks that you got to play, um, that may uh, help you, like going forward, like stuff that you learned during that those games in college you played for the first time. Um, I remember coming in. Uh, Bo told us that mostly in college they're gonna pitch you away. Like eighty percent of the pitches in college are away. And I didn't believe it until I got in the game and realized, like, most of the pitches are actually away. Like, when they miss in, it's because they missed a spot. Or if they if they, if they they spot a pitch inside, then it's a lucky spot because not much guys can really spot up inside. So really just sitting, uh, sitting um, looking for a pitch middle of the way because that's my approach. And um, these games, like, in the beginning of the year, really gave me a lot of confidence because I knew I could play, but... Once you get that first hit, and then I got a home run, my third at bat, and I've never hit a home run in a high school game. So it was like, it was crazy. I was like, I really belong here. So wow, it, it really gave me a lot of confidence to like really know that I can make it because that's all it's all about. Once you got self-confidence, that's all it is. So with the current state of your injury, like what, what can you actually do from a baseball activity standpoint? Like, can you hit yet? Or like, when are you going to be able to hit? I'll probably be able to hit like once I start running. So we're probably um my trainer said we'll start jogging in the pool soon. So I want to say I hopefully start running in like a month, like at least jogging, because like not not being able to play since March seventh is like it's hard mentally. Like you know I had to go through some things. Like I went through I went through a little depression with this injury because like I just got hot. And then my season got stripped away again. So it was, it was kind of hard, but I just trust in God and, you know, trust in my abilities. And I, I know I'll be back stronger. But right now I'm, I'm, I'm working on a lot of a lot of mental game stuff, watching a whole lot of baseball, just trying to, trying to be a student of the game. That's cool. I mean, that's good, man. That's really good that, you know, mentally you're learning – you've learned how to, to deal with that because um, – that's hard. I mean, like I I played some sports growing up, and like if you're injured and you miss a season, it's 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 really hard. Like it, it hurts, you know? and you have to channel that energy of like what would have been frustration into like you know something to make you make you better, even though you can't go hit or whatever. So the yeah. fact that you're watching film, like that sounds that's really good. Um, who? So when you're watching film, are there any specific players you're trying to like model after or like? Um, um, uh, I don't want to be cocky, but like I watch a lot of my film. To, hey, like, that, I to, like that. Okay. To e even like film and scrimmages to see like what I'm doing wrong, like okay. how I can okay. be, how I can be better with pitches. But guys, guys that I look up to, um, my favorite, my favorite defensive shortstops, um, Simmons. I feel like he, I feel like he's a goat with the glove and his arm. But hitting wise, I love I love watching Correa and Mike Trout hit, just because 
they're so quick to the ball and like that's what I that's what I try to like picture my swing as just going like having a flat bat just going straight to the ball because that's what I try to work on too because my bat coming in was like really upright and it's like a longer swing if you if you keeping it upright than if it's just flat and just quick to it so Korea I say Korea um Mike Trout and Wilson Contreras I watched the most nice Growing up in St. Martin, um, since there's never been an MLB player that was born there, um, how do you even get into baseball in the first place? Like, is there a yeah. culture on St. Martin Island? Is there a lot of people? Yeah, so growing up, like, I would say when I was – even before I was born until, like – I want to say, like, until I left, actually. Until the, the hurricane hit, baseball was, like – Everybody, the main attraction, like we had, we, they call it double A, but all the big guys, like all the older guys, the men, they would have like eight teams and there would be games like months, year round. So I would always, like my dad played, my uncle, both my uncles played, my mom played softball. So, and my, my, my uncle is actually the president of the Little League organization. So like... Yeah. I was born. I was. I was born with a ball in my hand. So that's cool. Are we yeah. old enough to like remember when, uh, like, Profar and those guys made the Little League World Series? Or were you too young? No, nah, I think I. Uh, I was. I was like. I think I was like. Oh wait, so I was like five years old. Oh okay. okay. But I remember. Um, yeah, I remember. Once I got to like eight, nine years old, seeing Kurosawa at the Little League World Series every year, and I'm like. Like, my goal was to go to the Little League World Series at the time. Like that's That was the goal, to win the Caribbean Championship and go to the World Series. It was, like, my biggest dream ever as a kid, seeing all those kids. Because, like, we would, we would play those kids in, like, the Caribbean tournament, and then they would win and then go to the World Series, and then you see them on TV, and you're like, damn. Damn, you know? that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, so you played against some of those guys, like, in the Caribbean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's cool, though. Nice. Um, okay. So what was, when did your like recruiting process like heat up and uh, like was USF one of the first offers you had or did you have others? Um, so I'd say like going at the summer, going into junior year is when like I would hear coaches telling me, oh, blah, 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 I came to see you. This came, the school was here to see you, blah, blah, blah. So don't do any, don't, don't, don't mess around, like be serious. But so sophomore year, going into junior year was when it like kind of started with recruiting. And then junior year, like once the year started, so we had we had a few guys that, that could have got drafted that year. So like a lot of scouts would come to our practices and stuff. So like the first few schools I talked to was like FAU, UCF, I talked to FSU. Then when I got to once I like schools could actually talk to me junior year. Um, first school that contacted me was Miami. Um, I went to a camp. Bo Durkak was actually there at the time. And that was actually like the first day of November 1st, like Miami called and I was like, whoa. But they never offered. And then I think my next call was Stetson, then USF. So like USF was like the third school that called me. And I went on, I had a weekend that the Friday I went to USF and then I had an official at Stetson. So the first, the first tour I took of a school was at USF and I was like, yo, this is, this is a nice campus, nice field. I love the facility. And then I went to Stetson right after for two days because I had an official visit and we're driving back and my mom was like, yeah, I already know where you want to go. <laughs> So yeah, USF USF stood out real quick. That's awesome. So you you tech you've officially visited two schools like for visiting. Is yeah. That, okay. And I guess maybe like camps and stuff. Maybe you've seen other campuses. Yeah, I went to FAU, um, UCF. Like they were contacting me, but they never pulled the trigger. Um, and FSU, they they never offered, but they talked to me. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Nice man. We're really glad to have you here. Um, I'm glad to be here, man. Yeah. Sure. So I want to know, um, 
with the current state, like being injured and everything, like do, you're still with the team a lot. Like how, how often do you spend time with the team? Like, where, yeah, I, where you still I actually just came from practice. Um, we just had a scrimmage, but normally I would have rehab early and then they would have practice right after. So I'd rehab, watch practice and then just go home and relax because I can't really do much. So, but even off the field, like we were hanging out like a few of us yesterday. So I, I still see the guys. Nice. I, I think you you're in the on the bench during home games, right? Yeah. yeah. OK, nice. So you, you've yeah. observed the team or you played on the team in the beginning and you've been observing like, you know, for the rest of the season. Um, so just from the perspective of, of watching, um, how have you seen like our team uh, develop like as the season's gone on, like from the beginning of the year until now? What, what do you think has changed or is improving? Um, at the beginning of the year, it was like it was kind of half and half, like the pitchers were like on their side and the position players on their side because like it didn't really start off like both cylinders firing at the same time like the pitcher struggled at first and we the guys were raking so it was like a lot of pressure was put on the pitchers but then like after that um the fgcu series like we all like came together and like we're one team we can't just all always blame it on the pitchers and then after that like guys started pulling for each other i would see guys actually like because i play with a lot of emotion like like, I hate losing. Like, that's, like, the lowest of the lowest, like, for me. Like, once I lose, like, I feel like I lost everything. So, like, I play with a lot of energy. And once I see the guys, like, buy into winning and, like, winning as a team, like, I saw the energy in the dugout go up. I would hear guys screaming from the bullpens, like, cheering their guys on. So, like, I see the I see the love definitely build up. So, like, everybody wants to win now. Like, at first, like, I feel like it was just, like, everybody for themselves like trying to fight for a spot like that's how it's gonna be but once like everybody figured out their role everybody started clicking and supporting each other so that's why i like this thing that's that's really interesting that you observed that because uh i got to go watch them play for the first time in the cincinnati series and uh one thing i noticed was there's a lot of like talking and encouraging of each other um, yep. I thought that was really good. Like, it seems to me like there is some kind of chemistry brewing now. Yep. So would you say that that has kind of, like, impacted the way that they're playing? Like, are they? No, yeah, for sure. There's always going to be, like, little things that determine a baseball game. But for, for us to see us play, like, as a family, because that's what – that's what I felt like in high school, why, like, our team was so good because everybody, like, bought into family. So, like, once you really, like, treat everybody like your brother, I feel like you play you play better as a team because, like, you know your brother got your back. Right. So, like, I feel like once everybody, like, started calling each other bro and, like, really, like, buying into the family is when we, like, started having each other's back. Because even, even so, like, the little things, like, somebody would strike out and in the beginning of the season, they would just walk back to the dugout and be like, damn. But now, like, they'll strike out and go to the guy on deck and tell him what's up, like, what the pitcher has. And just looking out for you guys, you know. That's awesome. So, I wanted to throw something out there because when I saw it, it kind of bothered me. Uh, apparently, in the preseason coaches poll, we were to finish last place in the AAC. <laughs> yep. I mean, if you look at the way we're playing right now, we look far from that um yeah. so is that something everybody's like aware of and maybe like a little chip on everybody's shoulder yeah I remember I was back home working out one day it was like nine at night and I'm lifting and coach sent the coaches pull like the rankings in a group chat and they were like this is what they see of us like we got to play with a chip on our shoulder and show them show them what we're here for because when I saw that that definitely gave me a spark like I was like, they got us projected last. Like, they don't know what's about to happen. No. But, and I feel like if our game, like, if our conference games were three games, that we would we'd be higher in our conference too. But yeah. that's another thing I noticed too. Like, I didn't want to dive too crazy into that because, like, it is what it is. But yeah, it's true that a, a lot of the serious splits, splits that we earned earlier in the season, we won two out of the first three. Yeah. Um, so it's like, but yeah, it, it is what it is. 
but I, I, I don't like it because like a lot of people, a lot of teams could split series and like you can't really, you can't really determine a winner by, by splits. So. No, I, I agree because there's a big difference between playing 750 ball and 666 ball. And you got exactly. three out of four versus two out of three. It's just a way different ball game. Yep. Um, has that been something that you or like your teammates have kind of like talked about is like these double headers? Like this, this last, this happened twice now. Yeah. Two double headers in two days. I, I was just like, I couldn't believe it. But yeah, I remember that. I remember um, seeing like when the game got changed to two double headers back to back. I was like, I feel bad for their leg. But yeah. co- coach is talking about it today at practice and it's just like, you just, just look at it as, is trying to build us up for the conference tournament because there might be double headers some days in the tournament. So yeah, just just testing you out. Right. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, whichever teams emerge from the AAC, whether we have like a conference champion at large, maybe maybe two uh, AAC teams might go to the tournament. You know, hopefully, if if we can, if we're to make it, we'll have to make it through winning the tournament. Um, yep. I feel like any teams from the AAC like go to regionals I feel like they kind of have an edge in a way oh yeah for sure we all all of the AAC teams had to basically build out like four-man rotations and yeah stuff that other teams don't have to deal with it's crazy yeah it's crazy yeah and just the whole new the whole new rule too with the extra innings and it's, it's 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 weird, but it makes it interesting too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Well, uh, so what what would you say is the team's uh, goal like for the last couple weeks of the season, and then and then conference tournament? Like, what's the vibe you're picking up from the guys? To win every single game, because we got a lot of we got a lot of guys that's just their last year, and they they let it known in the locker room that. They don't take this lightly and can't be messing around because we got 10 guaranteed games left. So literally they win every single game one by one. So that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, man. And I feel like I feel like, you know, they're very capable. I mean, you know, pretty much all the AAC teams firsthand. And I'm sure you could say we can compete or beat every For team. Sure. Yeah. Baseball, baseball is unpredictable. So I feel like I feel like anybody could be anybody. You just gotta have a good day that day. Yeah. Do you know if uh, we're gonna have fans at the AAC tournament or like it's in, it's in Clearwater, so I, I it's, there should be. I yeah, know. yeah. So I I feel like we need to get the word out and you know tell people to tell your friends, your friends' friends to come. Yeah, we gotta use that. The fact that the conference tournament is in our home. You know, city yeah right down the street like we need to fill that place up with green so yeah, for sure yeah cool all right man well um i guess i, wanna, I just want to leave uh with giving you a chance to kind of like talk about you know your your goals like for maybe the next year and then where do you see yourself where do you see yourself a year from now where do you see yourself at the end of your college career, and then what's your ultimate end all be all? Uh, if everything plans out how I want it to, you know, I see myself. My goals for next year is to hit at least six bombs, hit 380. Cause I know it's a crazy number, but you just gotta stay consistent day in, day out, and you you could you could anybody can do it. And um to be honest, make zero errors on the field. Like that, I take I'll take a lot of pride in my defense. Like defense is probably my favorite thing to do. So I just want to earn that starting spot at short or wherever wherever they put me because I can play here in the infield. But I feel like at shortstop is when I have like more control of the game. So from here from now, hopefully I see myself as the shortstop and probably leading baseball and batting average because that's what I do like, consistently. That's my goal. And at the end of my college career, I remember, um, like, I, I know what I can do. And, like, I see – I look at other shortstops and, like, I see them make plays. And I'm like, okay, like, 
I can make that play too. But obviously, you're, you're always going to bet on yourself. So for me, like, my goal is always to go first round out of college, just do what I got to do, put up the numbers, help my team win, because that's my main thing. Once you once you win, the sky's the limit. Like, once you If you go to Omaha and you're, you're the starting shortstop for that team, you, you get a lot of attention. So winning, winning is definitely, like, number one on my list. Like, I want to go to Omaha. Like, I want to make history here. And it, take, it takes a whole team to do that. So, like, that's my goal. I want to go to Omaha at least one time before I leave college and, and go and be a first-rounder. That's my goal. That's exciting, man. And uh, I, I, I believe in you, dude. I've seen, you know, what you could do as the first few games in college. Um, Thank you. And that's, you know, with limited experience. And now that you're going to have more time in, uh, you know, college training, weight room, nutrition, coaches, yep. that. So I guess the last thing then is with those goals being put out there, do you feel like you have the resources around you at USF, like in terms of the facilities and the coaches and teammates and everything to, to help you ultimately do that? Do you feel like it's basically up to your commitment? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's all on me. So – they, they, they give us everything that we need, you know, even academically. We have an academic lady that's on our, on our bus every, every week to make sure we do what we got to do. So it's, it's really all on me. I got, I got really good teammates that sometimes when I text them, when I was healthy, I would text them at like 9 at, at night, be like, yo, let's go hit, and they'll, they'll come hit with me. So it's, it's, it's all the little things got to put in work. We just, got a, we just got a weight room underneath the stadium. So... I really have all the resources right there. I just got to do what I got to do. Y'all just got a what? Yeah. Um, under, under, the, under the bleachers, like, there's a storage room, and they, they remodeled it into a weight room for the baseball team. Damn. Yeah. That's sick, man. Yeah. So, like, when I, when I first got hurt, I was just, like, while the guys take BP, I was just in there pumping it out. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. Yeah. yeah. So sounds like you got all the resources and uh, I like the goals. I mean, obviously um, what I've been trying to do with my account here is trying to grow the awareness of the program and the support behind it. Um, and obviously we'd, we'd love to see that first ever trip to supers and then it's college world series, which would be Omaha would be crazy. Yeah. So you guys have a coach that that's been there before uh, as a player. Yeah. So cool, man. Well, I, uh, I really appreciate you joining and um, thanks a lot, man. Yeah, for sure. I wanted to give you a forum to kind of like say what's been going on since we haven't really been able to um, check in on you. So, so good luck. Uh, stay thanks focused. A lot. Keep doing your thing. Appreciate everything, man. You, you really help us out a lot. Putting <laughs> us out there. I appreciate it. All right, buddy. Take care. All right. Have a great day, man. Thanks, man. You too.